What's up DJ Tech Tools, this is Lenny Kaiser. Today I'm going to be showing you the MIDI Fighter Twister and how to start using it with Ableton. We're going to get into a couple different mappings and techniques for how you can start using this and I'm going to show you a couple different tips and tricks. So let's check it out. Okay, so the first tip that I'm going to show you guys are the push and turn looping effects. The way that I've set this up is that a push of one switch on the twister is going to allow us to engage a beat repeat effect and then the turn of the encoder is going to allow us to engage another effect. So if we look inside of the audio effect rack here, you can see that I have several beat repeat devices set up and I've mapped the device activator to be turned on by each macro. So I've gone ahead and mapped each of these to a subsequent macro in the rack. And then I've also mapped those to the twister push switches so that when I engage those, I can turn on a loop there. So the cool thing is from there, you can set up multiple other effects in your audio effect rack, post these loops, and then map those to the encoders so that you have this action of pushing to engage a loop and then turning it to, to apply the other effect. So let's check out tip number two using the super knob functionality that's built into the MIDI fighter twister. So what the super knob functionality allows you to do is it allows you to send two CC messages or two control change messages with the turn of one knob. So we want to think about this that when we have our knob and we're turning it, we're sending one message to control a parameter inside of Ableton. And when it reaches past a certain point, it's gonna send another message to control another device. So if we look at deck A here, and I have the drums playing from this track, I've mapped one of the encoders here to turn on the send level. So I click on my send, turn on one of the push switches to engage my send effect and this is where I'm going to use the super knob functionality is over on the return track. So again I've set this up similar to the push and turn looping effects in that I've mapped the turn to control some of the effects on the return channel itself. So in this instance the the rotary encoder is controlling the decay time of the reverb and as you can see here, when I move past a certain point around three o'clock here, we start to engage the super knob, which is going to control the high pass filter on this return track. So again, push switch to engage the send and then turning to engage some parameters on the return track itself. And then after I reach a certain point, the super knob engages and hits that second parameter. So as you can see, after the knob went past a certain point, that second knob is engaged. And the way that you can set this up is if you go into the MIDI Fighter utility software under global settings, you can choose where your super knob start point starts and where it ends here. And then if we want to choose a knob to have the super knob functionality, I just click on the knob and then say enable super knob. So this would now allow me to map that to two parameters. Cool. Tip number three is using the center detent position on the encoders to map to several different EQs and filters. 
Some of you who are familiar with mixing on an analog DJ mixer know that zero on the EQs is actually in the center rather than having the encoder all the way on the right being, being zero. So you can set this up in the MIDI fighter utility software by selecting your knob and choosing whether it has the center detent or not. So if this has the center detent, it means that it'll give us this point in the middle that showing us that that value is at zero. This is really helpful in performance situations to know where you're at in terms of an EQ. So I know when I'm turning left, I'm, I'm turning down some of the high frequencies here because I've set this up so that it's highs, mids, and lows. And I've also mapped it in a way that these are turning on and off those frequency bands, so they act as kill switches too. So, low frequency kill switch, or just turn it down, mid kill, turn down, Let's talk about navigating the session now using the twister. So I've set this up in a way that the side buttons here, the top left and the bottom right button, allow me to bank up and down scenes. And then this bottom left button over here allows me to launch that, that subsequent scene. And the way that I've done this is if I go into MIDI map mode and go over to my relative mapping section, I can map my scene down, scene up, and then scene launch to these buttons. So for scene down, I've gone in and, launch, and mapped that to the bottom right button here. For scene up, I've gone and mapped that to the top button here. And for the scene launch, I've put that on the bottom left button here. So I found this really helpful in navigating. So now I can navigate launch scenes and also at the same time be manipulating effects with the, with the push switches and the encoders. Okay, so let's get into the last tip, which is using the MIDI fighter twister as a sequencer. So we can enter sequencing mode by hitting both of the middle buttons at the same time. And when we do that, we notice that our view changes and we now see our sequencing section here. So these four knobs here are gonna become our different voices. Um, so we can play different sounds from here. And as we turn each knob, it's gonna, it's gonna engage a pattern which will become more complex the further that we turn it to the right. So for example, we have high, a hi-hat going on one. As I turn it to the right, pattern gets more complex. And I can add in different sounds um, with the different knobs to create different patterns. You can adjust volumes below those for each voice. So if you wanted to take them in and out, you can do that here. And if you want to jump actually in, if you want to jump into the sequencing section itself, you can click on one of the voices and change the pattern. So there you have it. There's five tips and tricks for using the MIDI fighter twister inside of Ableton. If you'd like, download the free racks from this session here. And if you'd like more tips and tricks, check us out on the web at djtechtools.com. See you next time.